And you guys know I always like to start class on your back on these four classes. So you are going to roll on back. And you can do whatever you want with your legs. If you like to keep them bent, you know, keep them bent, that's fine. It's a little bit easier on your low back. If you want to put a bolster or a pillow underneath the knees, but straighten the legs, you can. If you want to come into kind of full Shavasana pose, um, you can do that as well. So just make sure that you're comfortable. Get your wiggles out, move around if you need to. We find a lot of times that when we first lie down, we think we're comfortable and then we realize, oh, wait, I need to shift just a, just a millimeter that direction. So there, it's okay to do that. And then, of course, once you get into your comfortable position, we're going to start with those three sides. So three times breathing in through the nose, opening the mouth, giving a big sigh out through the mouth. After you finish those three cleansing breaths, start to breathe in and out just through the nose. If you're familiar with Ujjayi breath, now would be a wonderful time to begin to engage that. If you're not familiar with Ujjayi breath, you create this very slight constriction in the back of your throat. And the best way that I can describe that when teaching it is you inhale and when you exhale, it's as if you are saying the word ha, ah, but with your lips closed. And you'll start to hear that tone of the breath. You'll also feel that slight constriction in the throat. And if you find that is comfortable for you, you can maintain that also on the inhalation. Maybe before we get moving here in a moment, just telling yourself that even if it's just for this hour that we're together, that it is okay to let everything go. Any worries, any concerns, any to-do lists, if they are still important, they will still be there when the class is over. But for at least for our time together, just release and relax. Now you can maintain that ujjayi breath for the rest of our time. At any point in time, you want to release that and just breathe normally in and out through the nose, then you can do that as well. Just remember it's your practice. And it's important that you do what feels good for you. So now you're gonna bring your knees in towards your chest. You can keep the eyes closed or you can open them. And with the knees in towards the chest, you're just gonna start to rock a little bit side to side. So let this be pretty slow. You'll find that the slower you move, the more you're gonna notice where your body is stretching, where you're twisting. You can be more mindful of the movement itself, of the sensations that are occurring within that movement, how they're changing and shifting. And then you're going to start to bring those knees and just rotate them in 
a circle, whichever direction you choose to go first is fine. If you want this to be a little more challenging, bring your arms down by your sides, maybe make your circle a little bit bigger. You'll start to engage some of those abdominal muscles. And then of course, reverse your circle, bring it around the other direction. Very nice. Go ahead and place um, your feet down on the floor. You are going to actually straighten your left leg and you're gonna hug your right knee in towards the chest. Right, and give it a really big squeeze here, release through the back of the leg, the back of that right hip. And then maybe you even take that right knee and you draw it out to the side a little bit. So it's maybe more in line with your shoulder. And you'll notice you'll get a nice little stretch in the inner thigh. Left leg's engaged, so remember that is what's keeping you grounded. So you wanna press through the left heel, down through the left thigh. Nice, slow, deep breaths. And then now we're gonna do circles with the right leg only. So again, if you want to hold on to the right knee with your hand, you are welcome to. If you prefer to bring your arms down by the side, you can do that too. Sometimes that allows you to make your circle a little bigger. You might straighten your right leg as it swoops around and down towards that left foot. And then you're going to, of course, reverse that circle, bring it around the other direction. Lovely. All right. Take that right leg down. We're switching sides. The left knee is going to draw in. Give it a nice tight squeeze. Release through the back of the leg, the back of that hip. And then taking that leg into the left hand and just bringing the knee out to the side a bit. Think of it being more in line with your shoulder, maybe a little further out. Right leg's engaged and strong. So thighs pressing down, heels pressing away. Nice, slow breaths. So if you have, if you know you have tightness in your psoas muscle, um, just laying on your back like this and pressing out through that straight leg and down through the thigh, that's going to help you stretch that psoas muscle. It's a big muscle when it's um, tight or contracted a lot, it brings our posture forward. So if you're working on posture, it's nice to lengthen that space. And then going ahead and making that circle now with the left leg. So holding on with your hand or placing that left hand on the floor, maybe making that circle a little bit bigger. And of course, reversing that circle other direction. Lovely. All righty. Bring both feet hip distance apart on the mat. Knees are bent and we're just rocking those knees side to side. A little windshield wiper action here. You guys probably already know if you want that stretch, right? In the quad, also in the psoas, you can push that top knee away towards the wall on the other side of the room and you will get a little bit of a deeper stretch in that space. Think of your quadricep, your hip flexor. Mm -hmm. 
Lovely. All righty. So knees now coming to a still place. You're going to bring your right knee back in towards your chest. We're going to do like these, I call them supine bicycles uh, unilaterally. So we're just going to stick on this right side. After you give it a nice tight squeeze, bring the arms down by your side. You're going to straighten that leg out. You're going to lift it up. You're going to bend the knee back in towards the chest. Right. So you straighten the leg out along the mat, maybe just hovering, lift the leg up, bend the knee to the chest. So again, of course, you can make this as fast or as slow as you like. I will say the slower you go, <laughs> the more you're going to feel the work. Okay, So we're working now on strengthening the hip flexor, strengthening the abdominals on that right side. Let's do one more. After that one more, you'll bring that right knee back into the chest just for another moment. Good. And then we're gonna switch sides. Okay, so right foot comes down, bring the left knee into the chest, give it a little squeeze. And then again, taking the arms down by the sides, you're gonna straighten that left leg, let it hover over the mat, lift the left leg straight, bend the knee back into the chest, okay? Doing this kind of at your own pace, Uh, let's do one more. After you do that one more, bringing that left knee back in. And then release it down. So we're coming into um, kind of like a reversed tabletop. So you're going to bend your knees. I want you to flex your feet. So your toes are pointing up towards the ceiling. Your shins are essentially parallel with the, to the ceiling or parallel to the floor. And then you're gonna reach both of your arms up so that the tips of your fingers are also pointing up to the ceiling. Okay. A little bit of a core stabilization exercise. You're gonna press your low back down towards the mat. Okay. Feel the lower abdominals engage like a corset. And then you're going to drop your right leg down, let it hover. If that feels okay and you want more, reach your left arm up over your head so that they are both hovering just over the mat. Then you're going to bring it all the way back to center and you'll go to the other side. So the left leg will extend out, let it hover. If that feels okay and you want more, reach that right arm up over your head, let it hover. And then you're going to come back to center. So as the limbs drop, be very mindful to keep that low back planted. So right leg, left arm. Breathe, bring it back to center. Good, left leg, right arm. Again, breathe, bring it back to center. We're gonna do one more on each side, right leg, left arm. So it's very similar to like a uh, spinal balance when we do that on our hands and knees. Now we're doing it on our back. Bring it back to center. Last one, left leg, right arm. Keep that low back pressing down. Awesome, bring it back to center. Go ahead, keep your arms up and Straighten your legs as best as you can. So the legs are going to go straight up towards the ceiling. The supine dandasana or staff pose on your back. <laughs> and you're flexing the feet. Toes are pulling back towards the shins. 
I mean, if you were to look at someone doing this, you'd be like, oh, it doesn't look like much. And then when you do it, you're like, oh, that takes a lot of a lot of effort. Keep those legs up. Let's do two more breaths, a big inhalation and a big exhalation. And another big inhalation and another big exhalation. Very nice, release everything down. You're gonna roll over onto your right side if that's comfortable and then come all the way up to sit. So you're gonna sit in cross leg pose, Sukhasana. And make sure your feet are flexed so both of your calves are supported and notice if you're in your default, right? Most of us go straight to that default. So my default is I like to lean forward. I'm in the front of the sits bones so I need to find where my neutral is. Others, they sit back and they're on the back of the sits bones and they need to bring it forward so that they can find where their neutral is. All righty, inhale, reach the arms up. We're gonna do a little cactus arms here. So you're gonna exhale, bend the elbows and just hold it right here. Okay, so you'll see my fingertips are engaged. All right, now see if you can pull those elbows back any amount and let the shoulders drop. All right, so my shoulders were all tense. My neck was tense, and now I just want to let that space soften. Um, a really advanced alignment way to think of it is feel like from the back of your neck that your energy is spreading out from the bottom of the armpit out through the elbow. Right, So I'm not contracted in. I'm releasing out. Good. Now we're going to do that dynamically, but we're going to let the elbows come down a little bit further. Okay, so you're going to reach the arms up, and then you're going to bring the elbows down and back as far as they go comfortably, and then you're going to reach it up. Lovely. Bring it on back. Good. A couple more. All right, let it be slow. Feel the activation in your upper back. Feel the activation you know, in your lats, between your shoulder blades. When yoga training, they teach you that poses that bring you energy are heart openers. Okay, so this is a nice gentle heart opener. You don't ever want to do things like this right before you go to sleep because it's supposed to increase energy. Instead, you do more forward folding type of exercises. Good. We're going to do just one more. And then you release those arms down. Keep your right hand on the floor. Keep your left hip pressing down. Reach that left arm up and over. Okay, so modification, of course, is to keep the left arm Kind of straight out to the side or maybe part way up or up to the ceiling or that full pose reaching completely up and over. Really reach to the fingertips, but push down through the left hip, push down through your right hand. Good. Bring it all the way back up. Switch sides. So remember your modifications. That right arm doesn't have to go all the way over the head. If that's not comfortable for you. Otherwise, if it is, push down a lot through the left hand, push down through that right sit bone, reach through those left fingertips. Good. Bring yourself all the way back up. Love it. All righty. We're going to do a little bit of a twist. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, twist to the right, right hand behind you, left hand just outside of that knee. Breathe deep, okay? You guys know I'm a huge believer in breathing really deep in a twist. You get a very different experience. Beautiful. Bring yourself back to center on an exhale. Inhale, reach those arms up again. And then exhale, twist to the other side. Left hand behind you. 
big, slow, deep breaths. Great, bring it back to center, coming right on up into tabletop here. So we already kind of did tabletop on our back. Now we're doing true tabletop. All right, spread the fingertips really wide. Okay, we're gonna come right into spinal balance. So you're gonna reach that right leg behind you. If you want a little bit more challenge, you're gonna reach that left arm up. All right, so you're pushing through the heel, you're reaching through the fingertips. We call that bifurcating the body. Core is engaged. Toes are pointing towards the floor. Good, bring it back to center. Come to the other side, a left leg behind you, right arm lifts up. Extend a lot through the heel, a lot through the fingertips. Make sure those left toes are pointing down to the floor. Very nice, bring it back to center, come to the other side again, right leg lifts, left arm lifts. We're gonna do a few cheetahs here. So as you exhale, round the back, bring the knee and elbow towards one another. And then you're gonna inhale, straighten it back out. So do that two more times, exhale, bring it in. Inhale, lengthen back out. And one more time, you're gonna exhale, bring it in. Then you're gonna inhale, Reach it back out and then come back down, tabletop, switch sides, left leg back, right arm lifts. And three cheetahs here. So exhale, round the back, knee and elbow towards each other. Inhale, lengthen. Two more times, exhale, round the back. And inhale, lengthen. Last time here, exhale, round the back. Beautiful, inhale, lengthen. Awesome, bring yourself back to a tabletop. Straighten your right leg, but have your toes on the floor. And then you're going to bring that right leg across your body to the left side of the mat or off of the left side of the mat even. And then you're gonna turn and look towards those toes. So you're getting a nice stretch on the right side of the body right now. Good, bring it back to center. We're gonna come to the other side. So left leg straightens, reach it over to the right side of the mat, maybe off of the right side of the mat. And then you're gonna look over the shoulder towards those left toes. Beautiful, bring yourself back to center. All right, last thing here in tabletop is a little wrist stretch. So if you can, turn your right fingertips so they're facing your body, okay? If they don't turn that far away, you can turn them out to the side. Um, but if you are able to get that kind of 180 degree shift, go there. If you are able to get that, then you're just gonna rock forward and back a little bit. And this is, I mean, an inch forward and back. It's not much. And it's a nice stretch. And that right wrist, bottom of that right forearm. Good, release that, come to the other side. We're turning those left fingertips towards the body and then just rocking a little bit forward and back. So if your fingertips are pointing out to the side, if you didn't make that full 180 degree turn, don't rock. Great, and then release that. So we're gonna come into um, downward facing dog. So if downward facing dog is not in your practice, um, then your modification is to come to child's pose instead. 
Otherwise, to come into down dog, you're gonna reach your hands about one hand distance forward from where they were. Tuck your toes and you're going to lift the hips, push the heels back, push the legs back, but also push the hands forward a lot. If you find you're in this pose and your back is really rounded, I want you to bend your knees and focus on lifting your tailbone. So you're working on straightening that back, having a nice neutral spine, and then you work on straightening the legs. We're not here super long, maybe one or two more breaths. Very good, and look towards the top of your mat. Go ahead and walk forward, come into a forward fold. You are in child's pose. You're simply gonna stand up and come to the top of the mat. Good, roll up one vertebra at a time. Let the head come up very last until you are standing up. Wonderful. Inhale, reach the arms high. Exhale, come into your forward fold. Let the head drop. As you inhale, place your hands on your legs. Look, look forward, neutral spine. And then as you exhale, round the back again, let the head drop. And then inhale, rise and shine all the way back up. Exhale, take it to your heart. Good, we're gonna do one more exactly like that. Inhale and reach. Exhale and fold, let the head drop, let the back round. As you inhale, neutral spine, lifting the chest. Exhale, round the back, drop the head again. Inhale, rise and shine, bring it all the way back up. And take the hands to the heart. Love it. Keep your right leg forward. Step back with your left leg into warrior one pose. Good. So you can stay in warrior one pose. Again, modification, hands on the hips or out to the side. You can reach your arms up into the air. If you want to do a little bit more with those cactus arms that we practice, you can turn the palms forward, keeping your legs in warrior one. Go ahead and bring those elbows down and back and then lift the arms back up. All right, so if you're doing the cactus arms, focusing really on engaging the back, all the muscles in the back, especially as those elbows come down. And if you're doing that, we're gonna do one more here. Good, let the arms come down. If they are up, walk forward or step forward and switch sides. Right foot's coming back, warrior one pose. Determine where you want your hands. If you're modifying, modify, that's okay. Reach the arms if you're lifting them. If you wanna do that cactus arms on this side, go for it, right? Squeezing those elbows down and back and then pushing the hands back up to the ceiling. Beautiful, one more. Awesome, let those arms come back down, come back up to your standing position. And you stay where you are, but for demonstration purposes, I'm just gonna switch the side of my mat that I'm on so I can still see you and you can still see me. So right foot's gonna stay forward. You are gonna bring it back into warrior two. So this time, Instead of being facing towards the front of my mat, my hips and my shoulders are facing the side of my mat. So my feet are a little bit different. If I were to draw a line from the middle of my front heel, it should go through the middle of my back arch. Good, inhale, lift the arms. Find stability and strength in the legs. So press the feet down. 
Take your left hand, just gently rest it on your left thigh, turn your right palm up, and you're gonna reach that right arm up and maybe back. Just going to where your body says it's okay to go to, this peaceful warrior. Good, bring yourself back up to warrior two. The left arm will lift. One more time, left hand comes down, turn the right palm up, peaceful warrior. Very nice, bring it back, warrior two. Go ahead and straighten your right leg so your hand might rest on your shin, it might come to your ankle, it might come to the floor, we're coming to triangle pose. Your left arm's gonna reach straight up. So this is a big inner thigh stretch. Sometimes you can feel it. I know I feel it because I have a really tight back. I feel it in the outside aspect of my lower back a lot. And we do this pose a lot in chair yoga class. Probably feels a little different though when the floor is much lower. So go ahead and bend your right knee, bring yourself back up. Lovely, release the arms down and turn your right toes towards the side of the mat. Come into a wide leg forward fold here. You're gonna keep your back nice and neutral and we're just gonna twist. So take your right hand underneath the chest, lift the left arm, twist. Switch side. Lifting that other arm, just coming into a nice little twist. Beautiful, bring it back down. You're gonna bend your knees to come all the way back up to stand. Good, now turn your left toes towards the front of the mat. Come into warrior two pose. So again, remember my shoulders are squared off, my hips are squared off. Lovely. Modifications to drop your hand, okay? Right hand gently, so I'm not like putting a lot of pressure, right? It's very gently resting on my right leg. I turn my left palm up. Maybe I stay here, maybe I reach up a little bit. Maybe I'm able to reach up and back or anywhere in between. And you breathe, peaceful warrior. And then you come back, warrior two. And then we'll do that peaceful warrior again. So right hand gently rests on that right leg, reach that left arm up, maybe back a little bit. And again, coming back to warrior two. Good, straighten your left leg, making your way towards triangle pose. Left hand might come to the shin. Try not to rest on the knee. So you might come to the shin, you might come to the ankle, you might take your hand to the floor. And that right arm will reach up towards the ceiling, right? You can modify and put that right hand on your hip. It's groovy. Good, bend your left knee, bring yourself all the way back up. Very nice. Just kind of heel toe those feet back together. And I'm gonna have you uh, sit down again, actually. So we'll do a little bound angle. Um, soles of the feet are gonna be resting together with one another. Knees are bent out to the side. If, if your body allows for it, okay, instead of having my feet, soles of my feet together, you can pretend like this is a book and you're gonna open that book a little bit. So now my soles of my feet are looking a little more up towards the ceiling, okay? Lift the chest up and you're just gonna come forward any amount that you can, right? Sometimes depending on your anatomy, sometimes you can rest your elbows on your legs to help encourage them to come down a little bit. Um, you might notice if your left knee or your right knee is a little higher, and that usually will indicate if one of your hips are a little bit tighter. And then that's higher. Okay. 
and we're gonna we're gonna be here. Okay. So you might find that eventually at some point you can let your head drop and the back of your neck relax. You might find that the soles of the feet start to come back together. That's okay. You might start to maybe bring your hands or your forearms in front of your toes. So we're going to be here at least another minute. Sometimes people like to maybe walk their hands over to the left and take a couple of breaths, opening through the right side body. If you did that, you walk it back to the center and then go over to the right a little bit. And take an opening in the left side body for a couple breaths. Good, you bring yourself all the way back to center if you did go to the side. Let's stay here another 15 seconds. And then slowly Bring yourself all the way back up. Good. You're going to grab the outside edges of your knees. Bring the knees back together. Maybe walk the feet in front of you a little bit. And just give yourself a little bit of a tight squeeze. If it feels okay for you to bring the feet in towards your body more, then you can do that. And maybe even wrap the arms further down the legs. Good. So we're coming into a seated pigeon pose now. You're going to bring your feet out. You're going to cross your right ankle over the left knee, like so. Now, you're going to get more stretch, okay, in that hip flexor or hip, sorry, area, piriformis area. The closer your foot and your body come towards one another. Okay, so you might scoot your bottom closer towards your foot, might bring your foot closer towards your bottom. And then when you get to the point where you're like, that's a good stretch, you can stay there. You can rock it. I like to rock it a little bit personally. Um, and you're going to notice when it rocks over to the left, the stretch usually gets a little deeper. And then I like to kind of find a spot, and I'm like, for me, that's the perfect stretch. And then I'll stay there and I'll breathe, okay? If you like to rock the whole time, rock the whole time. It's totally up to you. You wanna breathe though. Notice, um, just like when we do pigeon um, on our back or if you do pigeon, prone on your stomach. Notice if the teeth are gritting, if you're clenching, 
if the jaw is tight. And let that space relax, that space open up. Nice, go ahead and walk that left foot away. Release, switch sides, left ankle crossing over the right knee. Okay, bring it in, bring the foot and the body closer to one another for a deeper stretch. Flex that foot, let yourself rock a little side to side. You wanna find where's the stretch best for you? Because every single one of our bodies is different. We all carry stress in different ways. We carry tightness in our muscles in different places. We walk differently. We sleep differently, right? So only you can know where that stretch is the best for you. And I always think it's important to kind of give people that permission to find their own, their own space and where it works best for them. went many years taking yoga classes and just listening to what the teacher was saying. And, you know, when I started to kind of wiggle around a little bit and move around a little bit, and I realized that it's not, not always exactly what that person was saying was the best thing for me, which is why I like to give modifications and options and make sure that you, you do what feels best for you. Good, go ahead and straighten that leg a little bit, or release out of that. Um, I'm gonna have you lie down on your back and we're gonna do a, um, you can do it as a supported spinal twist. If you have a bolster, if you have a pillow or two pillows, um, anything like that, you would wanna maybe grab that before you lie down. And if you don't have that, um, you can do this without it, it's fine. get any props that you might want and you allow you down on your back your left leg is going to be straight down on the mat and you're just going to hug that right knee into the chest and we're coming into that spinal twist so you're going to end up taking your right arm and reaching it out to the side and then you're going to take your left hand on that right knee and you're going to let the leg come across the body, okay? So again, you can keep it just like this. We are gonna be here for about two and a half minutes on each side. Um, if you want to support yourself, if you feel like it's a bit of a strain in the SI joint, right? You can always support yourself by putting a pillow or a bolster underneath the right lower leg. Let your eyes close and just let yourself focus on your breath. Try not to hold. Okay? I know a lot of times in this pose, we're like we're trying to grip and hold ourselves in a specific position. So let your body relax. Let your body kind of drop down into the mat. Let yourself let go. Play around a little bit with where you're face, where your face is facing. I was going to say gaze, but I realize most people who have their eyes closed, maybe your face is towards the ceiling, maybe it's to the left, maybe it's towards the right. And you're going to go to whatever place feels best for you. About a minute through, so another 90 seconds on this side. Also a big fan of during these longer held, a deeper stretch, 
poses, taking sighs, because when you sigh, you can find where in your body you're still holding. Sometimes it's hard to recognize that. Sometimes it's hard to pinpoint it. Very gently and mindfully, bring yourself onto your back, squeeze that right knee in towards the chest again. And then you're going to put that right foot on the floor and let the knee fall out to the right side. Almost as if you were doing like a tree pose on your back. So again, an option for you is to support your right leg with a block or a bolster or a pillow. We're here just about one minute for this. Let your breath deepen. Perfect. Go ahead and just slide that right leg down the mat, making it straight. Bend your left knee, bring the left knee in towards the chest. And then come into that spinal twist on this side. So the left arm is going to reach out. And you're just going to exhale and bring that left knee across the body towards the right side. And we're here two and a half minutes. If you want to support that left leg, maybe with a bolster or a pillow, you can. If you want no support, that's fine. But the idea is that you're letting go. You're letting go physically. And sometimes when we let go physically, we in turn are able to let go of emotions or thoughts that we have internalized so much that they've gotten stuck in our muscles. About 30 more seconds here.
Uh, you're very mindfully, gently you're bring that left knee back in towards your chest, untwist. And then put that left foot on the floor, perhaps close to the right inner thigh, and then let that left knee just drop out to the side. And as if you were in a tree pose on your back. And if you want to support your leg with a block, a pillow, bolster, anything, you can. And we'll be here for one minute. Very nice. You're just going to straighten that left leg back out long on your mat. If you want to take the last few minutes here in Shavasana pose, you can. Um, I was going to teach that you guys bring your feet, bend your knees actually, bring your feet as wide as your mat and then let the knees rest on each other. Um, but if you prefer a traditional Shavasana, then by all means, take it. This is called constructive rest pose. And the reason I'm having us do that is because we did a lot of inner thigh work. And this is helping just to bring some balance back into the hips. It brings balance into the low back as well. And we'll be here about a minute and a half. And of course, I say that, but the beautiful thing about doing this online is you don't have to come back in a minute and a half. You can stay where you are, you can curl up, take a nap. So if you are coming back, start to wiggle your fingers and toes. You are staying and resting. Ignore what I'm saying. But uh, coming back, you'll roll to your side. You'll come up to sit. And letting the head kind of be the last thing that lifts up. And I end class by hoping that you give yourself some of that gratitude that you deserve for filling up your cup and giving yourself some self-care and um, appreciate yourself for that because you're amazing. There's only one of you and uh, you're worth it. So I say peaceful thoughts, peaceful words, peaceful intentions. Namaste.